Hey guys, how's it going? So one of the complaints that I've gotten in the past is that in this series I have a tendency to go over the gold servants more than the silver ones and that I rarely touch on the bronze ones. There is a reason for this. Most of the bronze servants lack either substantial or interesting stories behind them. In the broadest of wordings possible, they befit their ranking as bronze servants because they normally only have one singular tale tied to them that has engraved them into history. Even characters like Gareth, who is a member of the most famous medieval story in history, is really best known for just one tale, and that's a feigning their death of being a kitchen boy to prove that he was worthy to be a knight, saving a princess who was a classist, and then eventually being killed by Lancelot. I can, and will, totally make that video, but it's like that all throughout the Bronze Servants. Sometimes, though, this lack of information is played to the benefit of that servant. Not knowing what really happened with them, or how they got to this point, can leave room for inventive speculation throughout their history. In the case of the Hero of Orleans and the Slayer of Dragons Sasaki Kojiro, he has fully benefited from being a mere footnote in the legend of a more famous samurai. So. Here's the deal with Kojiro. We don't even know if he actually existed, kind of. We have sources to indicate that A. Sasaki Kojiro did in fact live and die in Japan, and that after he died, the island in which he was killed inherited his name. However, these sources are questionable at best as well, given that they are incredibly inconsistent with one another. So, I will attempt to lay down the facts around Kojiro as best as I can. Let us begin. Okay, so a good place to start with that would be that supposedly Kojiro was born in 1575. However, his last name was somewhat problematic because the sources on whether Sasaki Kojiro was a member of the Sasaki clan is iffy. The most accepted theories for why he has this as his last name both fall onto the mother being a member of the clan, however, Sasaki himself was the product of an adulterous relationship but raised as a Sasaki anyway. Or, alternatively, he was the product of incest from distant cousins. Regardless, we now have a Kojiro in the year of our lord, Jaguar 1575. Most of his early life is clouded in an air of mystery, and we are not sure who inspired him to take up swordplay. There are two candidates that are agreed upon as being likely culprits, these being Toda Seigen and Kanamaki Jisai. Toda was a master of the Kodachi, which was a short-bladed sword, and Kanamaki was a disciple of Toda's. Kanemaki is most well known for being the teacher of Ito Itosai and maybe Kojiro. If the name Ito Itosai rings any bells, you may know him as the founder of the One Sword School, which evolved into several well-known sword styles, or you've seen the anime Vagabond. In other words, pretty high-profile people. Kojiro, however, did not follow in the weapon choices of his teachers, and instead opted for what is known as the Nodachi, which is an incredibly long bladed sword. It was often given the nickname the washing pole due to its extreme length. Sometime before he founded his own school with the date given as the late 1500s in three of my resources, he was attacked by three people. It was speculated that this was done due to his prominence as a student of the sword or by other pupils who wished to see him out of the picture. He managed to fend them off with only a tesen, which is a war fan. After this and spending a good unknown chunk of his life training, he founded his own school that took on his fighting name, Ganryu, and dubbed it the Ganryujima or Large Rock style. The school quickly gained a solid reputation, and in 1610, due to his exploits and martial prowess, he was given the honor of being the chief master of weapons to Hosokawa Tadaoke who was a former ally of Oda Nobunaga, serving in his army at just the age of 15. In fact, it was to Hosokawa that Akechi Mitsuhide turned to for help after he killed Nobu, but was promptly rejected and eventually mauled to death by wild bandits or something. In other words, this wasn't just some rich smuck, which there were a lot of at the time. But of course, this is all merely me reciting facts at you, which is hardly as interesting as to why he was so prominent. Back to his weapon of choice, he used a type of nodachi that's called a monohoshi zao. Its blade was supposedly 90 centimeters in length, or longer according to some sources. Forces. For comparison, on average, a katana is about 70 centimeters in length. To convert that into American fun numbers, that's rounded to 35.5 inches to 27.6 inches. You would think that having the extra length would make it better than a standard katana, but on the contrary, they tended to be slower, heavier, and more unyieldy. Kojiro, however, was able to utilize such a weapon with perfect precision, accuracy, and speed. To make this more impressive, his infamous technique, the Tsubame Gaish, was able to happen in less than a second. Here is where we run into yet another issue. We do not have a definitive description of what this ability looked like. Well, not really. We know that the technique gained his name because one day at the Kitanibashi Bridge, Kojiro took notice of how the tail of a swallow was able to so quickly flick up and down during flight. Inspired by this, the skill likely mimicked the motion with a cut down leading to a swift cut up. However, this is speculation so it may be either less or more devastating of an ability depending on what you choose to believe. What remains constant though is that he was supposedly able to do this skill so quickly and precisely that he could sever a bird into three parts mid-flight. This skill was supposedly completed in 1605 and refined after that. 
but the most prominent anecdote regarding Kojiro is his duel with the ever-famous Miyamoto Musashi. Both were prominent sword masters with vastly different styles. Musashi wielded two blades at once and Kojiro wielding his watching pole. Both men were considered giants for their time and region, being about 1.78 meters or 5 foot 10. Being so similar in so many ways, Musashi made a request to duel him through Hosokawa Tadeoki. He agreed and they met on a remote island between Kyushu and Honshu. It was speculated that the location should be remote because if Kojiro lost, his students may just up and try and murder Musashi for disgracing their teacher. The date was April 13th, 1612, or 1613 according to some sources. Sasaki Kojiro and the witnesses to the duel arrived on time in the early hours of the morning. Musashi, however, showed up late with a spare oar on his boat that he carved into a boken, or wooden practice sword. Kojiro was seething mad at this point for being disrespected to such a degree. Couple this with some of the supposed accounts that say that Musashi also made fun of Kojiro as he approached, simply adding fuel to the fire. Kojiro threw the scabbard of his sword to the ground and immediately took a fighting stance. By all accounts, the duel itself was very short. Musashi baited the irritated Kojiro to attack first, deflected the attack, and managed to strike Kojiro on the side, breaking a rib, which would puncture his lung and kill him. There are anecdotes about Musashi positioning himself so that the sun would be facing towards Kojiro, thus making Musashi harder to see as well. The long and the short of it though is that Musashi managed a fatal blow on Kojiro who doubled over and died. This sight of another person who was so similar who had devoted his entire life to battle and was likely a better swordsman by all accounts dying in such a way is supposedly what gave Musashi his spiritual awakening and was the last of his fatal duels. Musashi did flee the scene quickly after as well, knowing full well that someone was going to be very unhappy with this fatal result. But thus ended the life of Sasaki Kojiro. So, now we have to ask the ever-looming question, and one that has been in debate for almost 500 years now. Did Musashi cheat? The easy answer to this is yes, absolutely, he absolutely cheated, because that was bullshit. Musashi was, by all accounts, a bastard. He fought with the sole express purpose of winning, and as a result, had the highest record of duel victories for his time at over 60. However, he would employ mental tricks to do this. His showing up late was not a new trick. In fact, he'd used it several times before, and Kojiro was likely aware of this. So, I believe that Musashi cheated. That is without a question in my mind at least. Did this make the match unfair though, and should Musashi be stripped of this victory? In my eyes, no, not at all. This is for a handful of reasons. Number one. It is impossible that Kojiro was unaware of the most famous murder hobo in history. If he was unaware and still accepted the terms of the duel, then Kojiro was an idiot, which he clearly was not. So he accepted the duel knowing full well what may happen. 2. Swordsmanship as an art and being a master of the blade is more than just how effectively you can swing a sharp piece of metal. There is a reason why samurai were also proficient poets, writers, and artists. Swordsmanship was interconnected with how well one was able to hone their mind. In this, Kojiro was clearly lacking, succumbing to his temper and likely hubris when Musashi showed up late with a piece of wood. In my eyes, this is a massive failing for being a swordsmaster and is what justifies the victory for Musashi. If you were the better swordsman, you would be able to maintain your calm and win the fight with ease. However, he lost. But of course, if you think I'm wrong, please let me know why down in the comments. But that is it. The very, very short summary of Sasaki Kojiro. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. If there is a servant you would like me to cover in the future, please let me know down there as well. Do all the YouTube stuff. Check out my Discord, Twitch, and Twitter, all linked down below. But for now, Keep your chin up. Peace.